enthusiasm. Good morning. Good morning, Facebook. Good morning, everyone. Please come in and have a seat. Um, so before I get started with the rest of the announcements, I'd like to ask Ms. Susan Lee to come up to uh, say a few things. Susan Lee! vacation Bible school. Um, we had lots of fun. I had lots of help though. I could not have done this without my helpers. Elaine Bayless, um, Ed and Mary Kirkpatrick, Emma Hinkle, RJ, um, RJ, I'm just going to say RJ. <laughs> um, yeah, and the team, the youth, it was, it was a really good time. We had a lot of fun watching the kids. Yeah. He is, he's, he's horrible. Um, so in preparation for Vacation Bible School, um, we went and we walked the neighborhoods. Um, RJ got his youth together and we walked the neighborhood. And I was paired up with his wife, Jessica. And we were walking and we noticed the houses out there were in disrepair. That um, they weren't the nicest houses, to say the least. And she said to me, you know, it makes me feel grateful for what I have. And fast forward, it's after vacation Bible school, you know, and I'm, I'm laying in bed and I'm praying. I'm asking God for guidance in my ministry, um, what he wants me to do next. And um, he says, I want you to do a, a backpack giveaway. So here I am in the middle of the night. It's 12.30, as you can imagine. I've got, I'm on my phone and I am Googling backpack giveaway, how you do this. You know, I have no clue. And my poor husband, the whole room is lit up at 12.30 in the middle of the night. And he's trying to sleep. Um, and I'm trying to figure out, because he wants me to do this, so I'm going to do this, you know. And then the enemy, as you probably already know, tries to get in there and tells me that I can't do this. I can't do it. You don't know what you're doing. So I start telling God, <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. I can't do this. And God said, well, you didn't know what you were doing with vacation Bible school either. And look how well that turned out. But like I said before, guys, I had a ton of help down there. Okay? I had a ton of help. And I need your help with this backpack giveaway. I need your help. There's tons of kids out there that need our help. Right. You know, um, and I know, I know that times are tough. Gas prices are through the roof. Food prices are through the roof. But I still need your help. Um, anything you can do. If you're up at Walmart and you see a backpack, grab it. If if you if you're not that kind of person, like I can't imagine Chunky going up. Maybe he just like to you know give some money. Desiree has set it up to where you can give money and. She'll put it towards the backpack giveaway. Right. But here's what I need from you. Exactly. <laughs> Somebody's donating 100 lunch boxes, by the way. Whoa. Oh, wow. wow. I'll send you some. Wow. I'll send you some. See, when God's in it, yeah. it can't, you can't stop. I mean, nothing can stop. Say, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Um, we have a box back there. If you hadn't noticed, the children decorated it for us. Um, RJ had his, it was just a bunch of boys down there, and they decorated it awesome. I am so proud of that. Um, we need backpacks, we need crayons, we need glue sticks, we need pencils, washable markers, um, plastic school boxes, pocket folders, zipper, pencil pouches, um, tissues, and paper, wide roll paper, and pens, and black and blue pens. Um, so, I was given a goal of 100 backpacks. And, and Jeannie about fell on the floor when I told her that. Oh, here are the flyers. Here are the flyers that tell you what we need. Okay? Um, I have a goal of 100 backpacks. 
And it's already started. I mean, 100. I didn't even know that. Right. Uh, goal of 100 backpacks. And we need these supplies by August 14th because we're going to be doing it, hopefully weather permitting, we're going to be doing it in the back in the pavilion. And I know that's the week of the men's getaway, the retreat, and that's okay because women, we can do this. We got this. Woo! Um, if not, then we'll do it in the, the beacon downstairs. But I need your help. Anybody, even if you can't donate monetarily, come help me because I'm, I'm sure if God said 100, I'm going to need 100, and I'm going to need help. Okay? Um, and with that said, thank you all. I love you guys. And I'm going to turn this back over. Thank you, Susan. Uh, yes, that, that, that's exciting. It's actually amazing. Yeah, how do you follow that? Yeah, I know. <laughs> so I will try. So uh, it's upcoming Wednesday services. So August 3rd is uh, the Before Recovery Fest intercession. So we're going to intercede for God to move at Recovery Fest, to touch the lives of those people in this area. There's going to be people coming out that just see everything set up and don't know what it's all about. That maybe have never experienced recovery or experienced hope. And that's what this is really about. Um, and that's August 3rd. Uh, August 10th, we have our own Reverend Jim Riffle. Woo! Let's be a good message to you. Don't miss that. Uh, for softball, come out today. Support our team in the playoffs. Yeah. One. Yes. Woo! Yes. Uh, that is, if you don't know, that's the airport field across from Strickland's. 1.30. At 1.30. Thank you. And then uh, something I'm really excited about, the men's retreat is coming up. Yes. August 19th to 21st. Start saving up now. The fee is 120 per person, which includes all accommodation and food. Flyer registration forms in the lobby. And if you need to see either... Reverend Jim or Jim Carello, who is, he's out there in the lobby, actually. Um, and then another exciting thing coming up for the ladies, Save the Date, the Women's Retreat Woo! is coming up. Yes. September 30th through October 2nd. There'll be more details to come. And then our annual church picnic and baptism, August 14th, after church. And Melanie Lake Park. Uh, which is very exciting, very powerful. I was there last year, got baptized. It was, it was something you don't want to miss. Um, hamburgers and hot dogs will be provided. A covered dish is appreciated. $5 to get in. $5 to get in. And there'll be a brief meeting August 7th after the church service for anyone who wishes to get baptized. I believe come and speak with Pastor McCray. Uh, and move forward from there. And then also, prophetic journaling. It's the first Tuesday of every month. This Tuesday coming up, August 7th, 2nd at 6.30 with Mike Mom. So if you're interested in journaling, if you want to know more about the thing, journaling, what that means, if God lays it on your heart to be inspired or curious, it probably means you're supposed to be here. So Recovery Fest. Okay. Oh, so the, yes. Yeah. Recovery yeah. Fest. Yes, that will be August 5th, Friday. But there will be a volunteer meeting for Recovery Fest on Wednesday, August 3rd at 5.30. We're going to need lots of people. There's a lot of things to set up. There's a lot of things to get ready and prepare for. So any volunteers that are willing or able, 5.30 August 3rd, volunteers will receive an arc lanyard with a staff event badge. It's very fancy. I have mine from last year. I kept it. Uh, and also half price on the t-shirts. Oh, Rick's wearing one. Rick's wearing one. Yes. Yes, very nice. Beautiful. Very nice. <laughs> And then also on Wednesdays, every Wednesday, 6 p.m., yeah. Megan, dance okay. rehearsal. Yes, if you there. ever wanted to dance, if you think you can't dance, if you think you can dance, show up all the way. And then something else that's very exciting, ICIT has registrations open now. For those who don't know what that means, ICIT stands for In Christ and It's Training. So if you want to learn to be more like God, like Christ, which is what we're called to do as Christians, um, classes begin September 12th. I see Jeannie in the back. I see Jeannie in the back. Jeannie in the back. So, prayer team will be available after church today and every Sunday. If you'd like prayer, if you have somebody that's going through something, if you're going through something, prayer is our way to intercede for people, to intercede for you, to reach the throne of God, make things happen. Uh, every Sunday after church. So back to about giving. <laughs> I think Mrs. Susan Lee actually hit it on the head. Yeah. So it is about 
money because we live in a world that functions with money, but it's also about your time. Yeah. It's also about getting out of yourself and just giving back to somebody. There's people in need all around us. That just give what you can. And if you don't have money to give, give your time. Yeah. Give your effort. God will bless that. Yeah. And then next time you might have something to give. Yeah. Um, that being said, please everyone stand and join us in worship.
No weapon formed against you shall prosper. All good things. So I wanted to tell you that. We're going to... Um, we're going to pass the basket. Father God, we thank you, Lord, that we have enough because you are the God of more than enough. We just sang Jehovah Jireh, which means you are our provider. You are the provision. You are our portion, Father God. So we just want to bless you with our, um, with our finances, Father God, and trust you in all things. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So I think um, we're, we're doing the Jesus studies. Woo! Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Use your clap for God. It's a God thing. Um, and we're going to continue it. But last week we did um, Jesus in the wilderness for the 40 days. And so um, I think the reason that I kind of wanted to start off with that word that the devil is a liar. Because when Jesus was in the wilderness, if you were here with us last week, what was he actually able to accomplish? Nothing. The devil accomplished nothing. With Jesus, right? So remember, if he's knocking on your door, he can only do what you allow. Okay? He only has the power that you give him. And we learned from Jesus that he had no power. God gave him no power. Um, so that sums up that. That was last week. So we're good. <laughs> Moving forward. Um, and just to know, you think um, once you become a Christian and you step in ministry, you know, I have said, I've said it before last week and before that even, easy peasy. That's not the case. Okay, the whole world isn't going to be happy. The enemy's not happy about it. Um, but God has equipped us with his word on how, on how to move forward in ministry. Um, and in this walk with Jesus, we're followers of the way um, with Jesus. So when we started the Jesus studies, we said we were going to look at, um, we were going to talk about um, Jesus. Uh, we're going to look at his words, his actions, his steps, um, all those kinds of things today. So we're taking a little bit of a twist today, and we're going to look at where Jesus walked. Now, has anyone here been to Israel? No. Well, we're going today. Okay. That's where we're going. We're going to Israel. Um, I already bought your ticket. You're fine. Strap in, buckle up, and we go. Um, so one of the things that God kept saying to me was, you need to look at my steps. You need to look at my steps. You need to look at my steps. So I was like, okay. So when I was writing down, um, I said we're going to do some case studies, and we will. But when I was writing it down, like it kept naming places, you know, like in Capernaum. And um, in, if I can say it right, Caesarea Philippi. I always want to say Caesarea, <laughs> Caesarea <laughs> Philippi. Um, uh, you know, it would say this is what happened there, what happened in Bethany, what happened in the Jordan, what happened in Bethlehem. Um, and I, it kept jumping out at me. So I was like, well, okay. So I started writing down these places where these things happened with Jesus. Um, you know, and if you've been walking this a long time, you kind of think people know certain stuff, but maybe y'all don't. Um, so I thought we would go through some of the places. I, some stuff I didn't know, um, didn't know exactly where things were in Israel. Listen, this is how crazy God is. You know, on the world map, Israel's about that big. Yeah. There's all this war and fighting over this holy place yeah. that's this big, yeah. which tells you there's something to it. Yeah. Okay? There's... Because who would care? You want the bottom half of Florida? Okay. Um, you know, like, that's not how big it is. It's like you could drive through it in six hours. Like, it's that, that's the whole country. That's it. it if you know anything about the Middle East, it's, oh, hello. It's dry and hot. You know, um, not, not, people don't really vacation there just because. You know, if you're going to Israel, it's usually because you're a Christian or a Muslim, meaning you have an intent and a purpose. You're not just going to vacation there and, and swim in the beach and all of that kind of thing, see the sights. Um, so we're going to take a walk. We're going to walk through. We're going to walk through some of the places Jesus stopped. Um, uh, so let's start. What's our first one? I have a clicker. Oh, oh, no. oh. I have the power. <laughs> Uh-oh. Push the button. Oh, this is so cool. Listen. Listen, somebody, um, any, um, do you guys, have you guys, do you guys remember who John Hogan is? Yes. Yes. Okay, he's got this. 
So he will be coming to speak again later in October. But he gave us the money to get this. Aww. So we have to get this before he gets back. <laughs>
There's a picture of it. Okay. Desiree, Desiree got this picture for me. Um, this is where the disciples got the revelation that Jesus was the Messiah. We will talk about that later. Um, and Simon was called Peter after recognizing that his teacher is the son of the living God in Matthew 16, 16. Um, Jesus then added, after he um, names Peter, he says, Upon this rock I'll build my church. The gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. This all happened in um, Caesarea Philippi. And in the area of Tel Dan, there are impressive sites that are well worth visiting. Despite the remote location, the remains of pagan shrines are thousands of years old. And they have some pagan shrines up here. I don't know if you knew you put those in. <laughs> That's okay. That's the god of Pan, if you're interested in Greek mythology. Um, anyway. So as, as we go from here forward, try to remember these names and these places. And I wanted you to have a visual so that when I do tell the stories of the things that happened here, you'll kind of understand where they are. Um, I believe that, um, I don't know the exact name of this place today, but they don't really allow Christians there. Now, if you're from another country and you're coming to visit, they allow you in, but they don't really allow the Christians that are in Israel to come to this place, from what I understand. Um, okay, next up is Cana of Galilee. Cana, have you guys heard of Cana? Yes. What do you know about Cana? <laughs> the wedding, please, right? Oh, the wedding. Yeah, the wedding happens in Cana. Um, so, so this is one of the temples. So we may not know much about Cana, but there was one significant event that took place in the, um, in the humble Galilean village. Jesus and his family attended a wedding in Cana. Um, we don't even know who the bride and groom were. What we do know is that when the wine supply ran out, Jesus' mother brought attention to her son, saying, do whatever he tells you. We're going to talk about that later. Although at, the, at first he said, this is my time has not yet come. In the end, Jesus performed his very first public miracle here in Cana, turning water into wine. There are several places named Cana in this region, and one of them is Carf Cana a few miles away from Nazareth that now boasts several cathedrals. This is one of them, as you can see. Um, but the importance of this place remains more spiritual than physical. Um, that that um, the miracle, this miracle began Jesus' supernatural ministry. Okay, so that's Cana. Capernaum. How do you say they say it in the chosen? Capernaum. 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 It's actually Capernaum. Capernaum. Okay. Capernaum. No other place besides Jerusalem has seen as many miracles or heard as many teachings from Jesus as Capernaum did. The small fishing village was the hometown of Peter, one of Jesus' closest friends. We know Jesus lived there, taught there, did miracles here. He also delivered people and healed both body and spirit for those willing. The town of Capernaum must have held a special place in Jesus' heart. Capernaum is one of those unique places in the land of Israel um, that we actually know the exact location, and there's still a lot to see at the site today. Ruins of the village from before our era, remnants of the synagogue, that's what you're looking at now, from the first century will help you imagine what life was like in Jesus' day. That's Capernaum. See, you're taking a tour. Sea of Galilee. Sea of Galilee. Okay, an entire, an entire lake may not be a specific spot, but it definitely is a place where Jesus walked. Um, it was arguably one of the most famous walks, to be honest, because walking on water is no small deal. Right. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> um, that's recorded in the Gospel of Matthew. So, that's the Sea of Galilee, one of them. I have a video we're going to show in a minute, too. Um, back to Bethlehem. Bethlehem, we kind of talked about a little bit. This is a picture of this part of the city in Bethlehem. We do not know if Jesus spent any more time in Bethlehem throughout his life, if at all, after being born there. Nevertheless, it was an important town for his family line. It was the hometown of King David, which I just told you about. So that's why he went there. And after that, they don't really know if Jesus spent any more time there. Mary and Joseph, I'll just say it again, Jesus' earthly parents had to return to Bethlehem to register for the census decreed by Augustus, the Roman emperor. 
They did so right in time for Jesus to be born. Jesus spent the first weeks, possibly months of his life, in this house of bread, is what Bethlehem means in Hebrew, house of bread, um, no less than 10 miles away from Jerusalem. So this is Bethlehem. And then let's look at the Jerusalem temple. Okay, so um, I'm gonna read in a minute too, but you can see the wall kind of, there's a wall right down here. Um, before the dome, the dome is surrounded by a big wall and that whole big wall, it's gone now, like was the temple. Um, the very first time Jesus was in the temple was probably about a month after his birth. That's because his earthly parents wanted to dedicate him to God in accordance to the law. The family must also have frequented the temple regularly when Jesus was growing up. As a result, at 12 years old, he was already debating scholars at, his, at this holy place. Years later, he confronted merchants in the courts of the temple, saying they turned his father's house into a den of thieves. I'm going to show you the next one, too, just so you can see. This is what the actual, like when they go back and draw, according to the, work, according to the Bible, what the temple actually would have looked like. Um, just to give you an idea. Um, he cared for this house of God so deeply that he often rested and prayed on the Mount of Olives, which holds the best, best view of the Temple Mount. Today the Temple is no more, as you can see, um, but you can still visit that Temple Mount, and you can also join Jewish people in prayer at the Western Wall, right below where the Temple used to stand. So can I go back? Okay, see the wall down there at the bottom? It actually goes around. Um, that's the the Wailing Wall, the Western Wall. Um, at, at Easter, they do a live, I don't know if it's live all year long, does anybody know if it's a live feed? Well, during the Holy Week, they be, I started watching it, it's a live feed of people going to the wall. Um, and you can watch people going there, you know, and weeping and praying and people coming and going, and they have a live feed, it was on 24 hours a day, and you could watch and actually see the wall um, and see people coming and going of the wall of the temple. So, and then this kind of shows you what the actual temple would have looked like. That is the wall all the way around and then inside. So when they talk about certain things in the Bible, like the inner courts, um, the upper room, these are all places that are in this temple. Um, and as you can see, it was so large that, you know, you could be in one part of the temple and nobody would ever know, you know what I mean? Because it was such a big temple and was supposed to have been beautiful. So, that's the temple. Next up is the Jordan River. We're gonna look at the Jordan River by Jericho. I had a good picture, but that's where I picked this one. So this is the Jordan River. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so this is the Jordan, this one is more accurate. This is the Jordan River, and on this side it's Israel, and the other side is actually Jordan. Um, so let's learn about the Jordan River. The Jordan River connects Galilee with Judea and runs right past Jericho. It was most likely by this desert city where John the Baptist called on people to repent and return to God, and Jesus met him there. John was called to prepare the way, and in that moment he recognized the one he was waiting for. Despite John's hesitancy, Jesus asked to be baptized, and many witnessed the most beautiful declaration of the Father's love, um, after the baptism, when Jesus came out of the water, um, they say the skies parted and they heard, this is my beloved son, whom I am well pleased. Um, and John, was a, John the Baptist was witness to that. The baptismal site today is very visitor friendly. It's only about an hour drive from Jerusalem with Jericho on one side and on, like I said, on the other side is Jordan, the country Jordan. So now you can say you've seen the Jordan River. The Jordan River. <laughs> a very accurate picture, probably taken last week. <laughs> yeah. Okay, up next is going to be Bethany. Bethany. Okay, this is a picture of Bethany. Let's talk about it. Bethany is located on the eastern side of the Mount of Olives. It was the hometown of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, close friends of Jesus. These siblings went through a chilling experience when Lazarus passed away, but not long after he was raised from the dead by Jesus. That's in John 11. 
It was an astounding moment when everyone saw Jesus' divine power as the Son of God, and at the same time, his humanity crying with those who mourn. This happened at Bethany. It's the place from where Jesus ascended into heaven as well. And the one small town is now a good-sized Arab city right outside of Jerusalem. It is a traditional pilgrimage destination that boasts many ancient sites from Jesus' day. So it'd be one of the places you want to see, Bethany. Um, next up is Bethesda. So this doesn't look like much. This would have been filled with water right down there. That would have been the pool of Bethesda. Um, so let's talk about it. <clears throat> On one of Jesus' visits to Jerusalem, he walked past the Bethesda pool near the Sheep's Gate. Today is like, it's called the Lion's Gate. It was a source of water for Jerusalem residents as well as for the temple. But there was something else that was uniquely special about this basin of water. Occasionally, an angel came down to stir the waters with healing. One man was waiting for his turn to be healed for over 38 years. Jesus saw his anguish. Without setting any, condi any conditions, he healed the man on the spot. The site of, the of Bethesda, which means house of grace in Hebrew, is a treat for any fan of iniquity. Parts of the ancient ruins have been discovered as late as 1960s, so it really is, an exciting, it really is exciting that even in the modern day we find confirmations of biblical accounts. Amen. It seems like Jesus enjoyed spending time both on shore. Is that the end of it? There we go. Um, it seems like Jesus um, enjoyed spending time both on the shores and on the lake in the waters. He often rested on a boat when he needed to escape the crowds that followed him and to find some quiet. Even a storm could not steal his peace away. Okay. Um, so now, as you can see, I just I want you to kind of see the map. So this is then AD 30 when Jesus was alive You're over here on your left. And then on your right is the one for now. Um, and you can see how it's changed. So you see where Galilee is, and the little blue spot in there is the Sea of Galilee. And then if you go up above that would have been Caesarea Philippi. Um, and you can see Samaria and Judea. We didn't have the bottom part. Is it up there? Jerusalem's on there. Can you guys see it? You guys, can you see Jerusalem on there on the bottom under the green? Under Judea? There should be Jerusalem. Is it there? Okay. Um, just so you can see some of the cities that are talked about in the Bible um, compared to what it looks like now. Um, so Samaria, which we'll, we're going to watch the video from The Chosen um, towards the end of this series. But you can see um, it, was a pretty, it was a pretty large place. So that's my... So now you've been to Israel. Yay! Yeah. Welcome back. Okay. Is the video next? Um, so I have a little video too that it's just one minute long, um, and then I'm going to read to you guys. Are you ready for me? Not right now. Okay. So let's.